Hey, hello. Welcome. This devlog took some time since the last devlog because I was mostly kind of demotivated because of some issue and I'll get to that a bit later in the video. But the goal was to sort of get the, 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 the starting world into a, a nice and pretty shape and that meant like doing all the vegetation, flora, trees, flowers, getting some monsters in everywhere. And I quickly realized the state it was in right now the GPU was, was not happy. Uh, I think I had like frame rates of 40, 50 milliseconds every frame. So it wasn't doing great. And that was just with my little starting area and like one area with trees and then monsters and stuff. So the goal straight on was, okay, let's take a look. Why is it so heavy? Let's do some performance. I did a lot of analysis. What about the overdraw? Any big shaders doing too much work? Um, I quickly saw it was mostly the flora that seemed to be the problem. Uh, had a lot of different flowers, a lot of big trees. So I started removing stuff, uh, looking at different camera angles, see where the problem was most obvious. Uh, and as it turned out, it, it was indeed the vegetation. And like I used a lot of different flowers and some of them were really heavy. So I kind of did a repass on the whole thing, removed a lot of trees. The trees were really heavy as well. Um, and basically started clearing, cleaning things up. I used a lot of, I used a lot less variations of flowers, just a few basic pieces and kind of reworked them everywhere. And that's what I started doing. So you can see me here kind of just cleaning things up, placing new vegetation, flora, kind of, you know, predefining the map. Uh, and as part of that is also not just the vegetation, but also, you know, clear out some of the edges. It was mostly just empty terrain, add a few rocks, a few edge pieces, work out some of the, the parts in the areas and kind of. And to give you kind of as an, uh, a view of what it's supposed to look like is if you, if you look at it from the top view here, it's going to be basically four different zones, uh, like monster zones, uh, where there's going to be a fixed spawn of a lot of monsters for grinding xp uh for players to hang around and kill stuff and basically one two and three are just their, their own zones slightly different vegetation different creatures and four is kind of like this semi-secret area it's not too difficult to find but if you jump over the mountain edge you'll get there and there's going to be a few elephants there uh and if the player is explorative enough, there's going to be a kind of a hidden cave there with some creatures that have a lot of extras, more special loot. Uh, it's not too difficult to find, but kind of a little extra thing. Uh, some other thing to note is, yeah, the, the cave is kind of like a BD dungeon. And also the other one is kind of here at the, the castle thing. You can see it in purple. Uh, so yeah. So that's the goal. Uh, hopefully I'll get there at the end of this video. But then, uh, turns out indeed the vegetation did all the rework, uh, put a lot of creatures in there. And then I quickly figured it wasn't just the GPU that's the bottleneck for performance. It turns out the CPU is also having a really rough time. And then it's like, okay, what's happening with the CPU? And there's a few obvious things. I'm using a lot of things with thick, mostly UI. So there's a lot of work for improvement there, but it isn't that drastic. Uh, animation is quite heavy. So I'll probably spend some time on doing some animation optimization. I already have some ideas on how I can best approach it. I'll also dedicate a specific video to that when I get to it. Um, but the main thing is, and that was kind of the demotivating part of this, this last few weeks, is the character movement component is a serious performance bottleneck when you're dealing with numbers larger than, let's say, 20, 30. And the way it's set up uh, in this project right now, for simplicity, given that it's a prototype, is the creatures are also characters. Why? Because I can use their network, uh, networked character movement component with all the interpolation, everything built in, which is great, but also uh, apparently very, very expensive. So that basically means I have to get rid of the character movement component for creatures. I will keep it for players, uh, but I have to get rid of it for creatures. But the thing is, there's no alternative when it comes to proper network movement in Unreal Engine. The, they have a floating pawn movement component, which works good enough for creatures, I'd say. But there's nothing in there to have smooth network interpolation on clients. 
basically what it does, it just replicates the movement and it just teleports the creatures to that new movement position, right? But that means you get a lot of stuttery movement. There's no proper networked client interpolation. So that means I have to build it myself. And I was like, ah, oh, it's a lot of work, a lot of testing, debugging. I'm not that great at, I know it's a pain in the ass to make these things. So in the end, I, 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 yeah, I just accepted it and went with it. And so I created an MMO AI movement component here. Okay, let me show you what I've done. Um, so basically I just copied over everything I got from the default pawn floating movement component. Um, so all of these things are from the default pawn. This one is uh, new. It's something I did to make sure uh, it kind of rotate to where they're moving to, uh, which it doesn't do by default. Uh, this is still from floating one, and this is also from the floating palm movement. Okay, so the gist of it is basically this. I have two properties um, that are replicated, and that the server updates, just imagine every frame, right? When, when someone is moving. So what it's doing, it's um, writing to this variable, it's writing the position, and is writing the time of that position. Uh, the time is necessary so I can do the interpolation on the client side and kind of make sure I always get the right velocity from the position values. I'll, I'll get to that a bit later. Uh, I also write down the velocity of the player and it's yaw, which I use for rotation. So it's only the yaw. Um, and yaw is in the W component. The reason I also write down velocity, even though I will be recalculating it later from the position, is it gives the client the clients a way to, to realize like, oh, the player stopped moving on the server, so I'm going to stop doing simulation logic, which is necessary, at least the way I saw it. And um, you'll see I'm also using these in, a, in an array. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm kind of buffering them up. So I kind of like take, you know, the last 10 positions, calculate the average position of those 10 positions. Um, so it kind of more smoothly uh, roughs out like, like, smooths out the rough edges of what I'm getting over network. Uh, however, I actually tried playing around with it. I basically at this point only used two samples, which is just the default as if I weren't even using an array, but I'll, I'll, I kept it in there because it may be useful. I have to do some more testing with this. Functions all the same. Uh, one thing to note is I'm using the unwrap functions here because um, I need these on the client to pass them in the right array and potentially readjust the array when I'm getting the values. One thing to note on C++, when you're using the replicated using functions uh, or the unwrap functions, it, these only get called on the client, which is different from Blueprint, because in Blueprint, your replicated using or unwrap functions actually gets called on the server and the client. So that's a good thing to know. And a little trick, uh, it's not that obvious from documentation, but you can pass the old, um, basically pass the same value as, an, as a parameter and it will give you the old value. So you can compare them. Uh, which is pretty great and it's useful in my case as well. So logic wise, uh, I basically just injected what I, where I felt it made sense into the floating point movement component um, and kind of the logic you can kind of see here. Let's, let's ignore this whole rotation component for now. Um, but basically what I'm doing is yeah, basically this is all the new logic. Uh, I'm just checking, am I moving? If so, send the velocity over uh actually no let's start here um this is the position logic basically all it's doing is if it's indeed the server and we're moving send over basically write down the variable so they get replicated it's simply getting the location uh, and for rotation it's getting the velocity size in this case um uh yeah, getting the size of the velocity and just the magnitude, getting the actual yaw value and also the time for this, this entry. Because they may be replicated in different time frames. Not sure, but just in case. Um, yeah, and um, let's see, I'm doing some movement logic, basically checking if there's actually moving. If not, then the next frame I will actually stop sending and do kind of like a final uh, set point at some point, which is here. Yeah, because if, if I realize like, okay, uh, we're not moving anymore, that it used to be moving less frame. In that case, force the velocity magnitude to zero so the client know like, hey, uh, 
server stop moving. Okay, client side, because basically when we're running a proxy, um, we are doing, okay, there we go. Um, this is kind of the, the logic of it. So ignore the whole array thing. This basically applies for every old and new value. So basically I got the last position, I get the current position, um, and also the same with the time, right? Uh, I get the previous position from the server, get the current uh, position from the server, same for the time, and then use those to calculate velocity, which is basically the delta of the position between the two, divided by how much time it took for these two different positions. And that will actually get you the velocity. Um, and I'm dividing by time because like, I don't have the guarantee that every network update comes in at the same exact time interval, right? So delta time doesn't apply here. Um, adding them all up, getting the average. Uh, this will give me the average position of whatever's in the buffer. Buffer right now is actually just two, so I'm really not really using the buffer, it's just the current and the old position. Uh, same logic for rotation. And then what I'm doing is again, you know, if we actually move, uh, if so, simply apply uh, the position. Uh, let me check because there was one relevant thing here. Uh, no, I think this is basically, basically the gist of it. I'm doing a few things like checking, you know, checking if it's high enough, uh, you know, you're doing some sort of delta checks. I tweak these numbers kind of ad hoc, not really database, just whatever felt right. I'm sure it can do it with a lot more tweaking. And one extra thing to notice if I'm actually, um, uh, moving, we do all the logic, but however, if not, um, don't do this. Let me check. Uh, oh yeah, indeed. Only do, yeah, this is kind of similar to the server case. Uh, cause if it's the final thing where it's actually not moving, simply put it to the latest server position and that's it. Uh, also to make sure it doesn't keep simulating all the time. Okay. Rough gist of the whole thing. Um, I will put this online. Uh, same for the character, um, MMO character thing. I've put all the work in in translating. Same for the player movement. It's like, I haven't checked this on any advanced use case, but it seems to work for now. And honestly, if I were to, if I were to do this approach, I would have liked this to have kind of as a base uh, to start from, right? So I'll put this online as a gist. You can find it in the, in the description of the video. So you can see here, I kind of got something working. It seems like it's smooth enough. But then I was like, okay, you know what? Let's embed it into my creature, uh, creature actors. But then another problem came. And yeah, you can kind of see it here from this, this class diagram of how it's set up. Character by default in Unreal is derived from pawn. And characters have a character movement component, right? And that's the one I'm basically trying to replace. But the thing is, um, I derived a from character, a base unit, which is a character, uh, which has a lot of shared functionality, like like every base unit has health, uh, you know, a level, movement speed, like those things you'd expect to have shared between, you know, players and monsters. And the benefit of this approach is that things like combat, combat, which are, you know, designed for player against monsters, can also work for player against player, right? Like a lot of things can be shared. It, it makes sense for me. The problem, however, is that base unit is a character. And the whole point of this change in movement component is that I'm trying to get rid of the monster being a character. Ideally, the monster is, based, is just a pawn uh, that has his own movement component. But then I also want monster to be a base unit and a base unit is a character. So it's, it's kind of tricky because I want the player character to be a base unit, but I also want the monster to be a base unit, but base unit is derived from character. And I can have a base unit that is either derived from character or pawn. And I would have two different classes. So like, how can I keep the shared functionality? Well, the approach I went for, and I think it makes sense, is I decided to make my own version of Unreal's built-in character and character movement component. And what that means is I basically copy over um, all the logic and just make it my own version, make it work with different naming things. And then I have the same functionality with a different name, but that means because I have my own, it's my own code. I can actually decide that uh, the base unit, uh, derives directly from pawn and my new character derives from base unit, uh, from, yeah, from base unit as if base units in between, you can see it in this diagram. 
And this way, um, I call it MMO character and MMO character movement, basically put MMO in front of these things. This way, both the MMO character and the monster derive from base unit. Uh, they both derive from pawn. Uh, but the player character is the one I use for all the player character stuff, derives directly from MMO character. So in the end, they both are derived in a way from base unit, so they have the shared functionality. And I can give the MMO character my own version of its character movement, and the monster gets his own version of the movement thing, the MMO AI movement that I was working on before. So this works for me. However, it's a long, or it was a long and painful process, uh, because you may have heard the stories, but character movement component built-in version is like 14,000 uh, lines of code. Uh, I had to go through all of them. There's a lot of global uh, defined variables, so that was going to have conflicts, because I've obviously copied them over, rename all of them to MMO equivalents, hope it still works uh i removed some stuff there was stuff about i think it was either root motion or some ai stuff that was in the movement component that i didn't need for the for the player and it was I had a lot of big interdependencies with tons of other classes so i just decided removing it is easiest for now uh less risk of breaking things and took some time but in the end it worked and the great benefit is that now i have full control over what I want to do with either character, character movement component for later down the line if I want to optimize it a bit more, which I expect that's going to happen if I have hundreds of players running around. I really want to dive deep into that character movement component because it's a serious bottleneck otherwise. So already set up for the future, which is great um, because I had my own version of the character. I could, you know, derive from base unit instead of pawn and I could, you know, create the MMO movement component within the MMO character instead of the default character movement component. So everything's set up and it seems to be working, although you can see there's some obvious glitches and, you know, problems, but I just worked out the kinks. Uh, tweaking things, there was an error in my script and worked those out. Um, I made sure, because uh, they can collide on each other and then they go on top of each other and the floating palm move opponent doesn't really have gravity. So from now, a pretty good approach is just disable collision between themselves, like monsters, uh, which I think is kind of an MMO RPG default, because otherwise they can block pathways and entrance and then no one can go in. So two birds with one stone, I guess. And in the end, it seems to do pretty well. And looking at the performance metrics now using stat unit, it looks pretty stable. And what you're seeing now is the performance with like the whole vegetation in the whole map with probably 80 creatures running around doing their thing. So I'd say for now, I'm pretty happy. Still a lot of room for improvements, mostly in the animation side and the amount of ticks, but this is at a good stable level. So I'm happy I got this thing working. Uh, so yay yeah, for more motivation in the future. And it's really set up for the future, which is great. So uh, what you're seeing now is basically kind of the finished result of me putting vegetation trees everywhere, roughly putting the creatures everywhere. So I'd say the map is in a pretty good state now for playing, testing around. So that's great. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Like it's a it, bit of a weird, not very exciting devlog because it was mostly just working on some weird nitty gritty network stuff here. But that's part of the interest here, I think, making an MMORPG. And I think they can be very helpful for others as well. So yeah, got all the creatures in that I want in the game. Uh, you can see them all running around in the test map. I'll probably be placing them in their proper areas next devlog and actually do some fun and cool stuff. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you around.